First off, lab code is fun, and that's why I enjoy programming in it. It also helps us solve problems that you know we're curious about, but there's no other way of solving it. And programming in general can be very, very difficult. Lab code is easy to approach for simple problems, and it's possible to solve some very interesting hard problems. And this makes it a very fun environment to work with. It uses a language that makes sense, so logically it sticks in your head, so you can remember code a lot easier. And you can kind of say it, which makes it easier again to remember. The more ways that we can interact with our logic, the better it is in terms of retention, in terms of thinking about problems that we may have. Understanding how the controls work and understanding how they intuitively work. I mean, for me personally, I was amazed just at how clever the fields are and how we can talk about a, a field in terms of the content in the field, like lines. Well, everyone knows what a line is. Well, you say line one. How many lines are in, in the code? Well, it's logical. And so things that would normally have some specific terminology in programming follow a linguistic terminology as much as possible. And some programs might even say, that's a bad idea. People need to learn how to be very concise. And that's true in some extent. Um, but I look at some of those languages that they say are very concise, and they become muddied with a lot of library calls and and I say, that's not very concise. I mean, you're still not concise. Um, so our argument with live code maybe it's a little wordy, but those words have meaning, and, and they, it makes sense. Um, I think programming is a very, very important thing, and I think professional programs sometimes get bogged down in a mindset, a way that makes sense to them, a mathematical mindset, perhaps. And live code kind of doesn't take an arrogant, arrogant look at programming. And I think that's really the problem with a lot of programming languages, is they're very arrogant. Um, they're forcing you to see things from this very elitist um, perspective. And this is a non-elite language, if that makes sense. Um, and it really should be supported. The community needs it. Young programmers need it. I mean. I really wanted to teach my son to program, and I knew the only language I could teach him would be live code. But I, I'll be honest with you, I re resented the idea of teaching him live code because it was proprietary. But now that I know that Kevin Miller understands what it means to use the GPL, and, and that there are consequences both good and good, meaning you have to understand that when you fork a, a project in open source, it's really good for the community. It means the community has a need for it and they want it and they're embracing it in one way or the other. Um, and he gets it and that's cool. Um, so for all of us, we ben benefit. And I just wanted to make sure everyone un understands that I'm very supportive of, of the project and what they're offering us in terms of building a open source modular platform makes a lot of sense. And they have a proven track record in terms of the quality of their code that they know what they're doing. So I don't really think we have to worry about it getting done. It will get done. Um, maybe it's a little expensive, but I don't think it's too much to ask um, for what we're going to get in return. So from an open source or a GPL version, free software perspective, I think it's good for everyone. And I really, really want to encourage people to think about it. Um, it's, it's important. It's important for programming. We need more programmers. We need people that understand programming. Because I look around us and I, I think, oh my goodness, if you just understood a little about programming, you wouldn't say something that stupid. I'm getting off topic, but I really think it's a philosophical standpoint, too. I mean, programming, I think, is good for everyone. I would like everyone to have some understanding of programming. And this is an easy language to teach. Uh, and it's easy for anyone, I won't say anyone, to access, because there's some people that just won't be a able to understand. But it's easier for me to explain if I have something concrete, something I can say, open this, do that, talk, write these couple lines, and it will do what you expect it to do. They don't necessarily need to get really deep into programming to actually do programming. Um, and the learning curve, I think, is pretty low. Now, no programming language is for everyone. But I think this is 
a program language that people can grow with. And I think that's a very important aspect of language and of this particular type of language. And the fact that they're going to make it extensible in terms of localization is even cooler. Now, I don't know where that's going to go. I mean, it's really hard to say how that's going to work. And Kevin hinted at something of exporting HTML5. Now, that's beyond what he wants to talk about, but that's actually something that I consider a very practical um, way of dealing with the problem of web integration. But that's in the future. But if, if RunRev doesn't do it, the open source community can do it. We can do what we want. We can export JavaScript, Java. We can do the things that, for commercial reasons, RunRev doesn't want to do it. They're saying, okay, we understand that. It may not be practical for us to do it, or it may not be desirable for us to do it, but it, it may be desirable for the community to do it. And that's the whole point of open source, our GPL software. Holy shit.